Hello everyone, uh, my name is David. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for letting me be part of your classroom. Uh, today I'm going to get you guys started with section 1 of chapter 13, which has to do with gases. We're going to learn the basic laws of gases, a little history uh, on how these laws came to be, and uh, from there uh, be able to use these laws to calculate certain variables of gases, uh, such as volume, temperature, uh, pressure, etc. Right, and and maybe ne next time, next week or something, you'll learn how to factor in numbers of particles, like moles, into these gas laws to make a new law called the ideal gas law. Okay. So before we get to gas laws, let's make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, we all know what a gas is, right? Um, let's go ahead and name off a few. Anyone? We have um, helium, you know, that you put in your balloons. Oxygen that you breathe. Hydrogen gas, there's also carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, we have ozone. Um, is H2O a gas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be, you know, it, it can be a vapor, it can be a liquid, it can be a solid, you know. Um, so let's get started on gas laws. Uh, in college, we actually call these the basic gas laws. Um, the first one I like to talk about is Boyle's Law. Okay, Robert Boyle. Um, was a scientist during the 1600s. Uh, he lived in Ireland. Uh, he was he was the youngest of 14 children. That's right. He had 13 brothers and sisters, and he's the baby. <laughs> um, Boyle did some uh, some. You don't need you guys. You guys don't need to know this, by the way. But Boyle did some interesting experiments during his lifetime. Uh, he actually thought that he could actually make gold from combining other metals. Um, so, of course, we all know that, that that doesn't work out, you know, it's, it's an element. Um, uh, Isaac Newton, you know, the guy that had the apple fall on his head, uh, he, he actually was alive, a young man, uh, during Boyle's days, and the two, the two did not like each other. Um, Isaac Newton was always trying to prove Boyle wrong, he was always questioning his ideas. Um, one thing that he did contribute to human society, though, Boyle did, uh, did um, had a hand in figuring out that a healthy human body has a constant temperature. What is that? Like uh, 98 degrees, 98.6 degrees, you know? Yeah, he had a hand in figuring that out. But, of course, we're here to know what is his contribution to the world of chemistry and gases. He actually worked a lot with pressure and volume. Um, his research concluded that in an apparatus, a, a system, a pump, a tank, whatever, right? At a constant temperature, the volume and the pressure are inversely proportionate to each other. Okay, so give me that. Or it could be that. Okay, it means the same. As one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay, and which makes sense. Like I take this water bottle, for instance. More pressure, less water can go inside. Less volume, right? But more volume means less pressure. As one goes up, the other goes down. So how does this look visually? Let's do a graphical representation, shall we? So let's do the y-axis right here, right? And here's my x-axis. And let's go with P. So let's put P right here and V. So these are all units of volume. So things like ounces, liters, milliliters, you know, gallons and such. Here we have pressure with like atmospheres, millimeter mer of mercury, stuff like that. So one goes up, the other goes down. So one has to go that way and one has to go down, right? So pressure, let's go this. Is that right? Does that make sense? Here's the thing about volume and pressure. So I drink this water bottle, right? Once I drink it all, it goes to zero. That's it. You know, it stops. It just stops at zero. Same thing that goes with pressure. So drawing it like this wouldn't be right because it actually crosses this, the zero axis and goes down to negative numbers, right? So I think a better way of doing this does anyone know? I think the best way to do it is like this. You continue to go down, you know, but uh, it will never actually cross the axis itself. But that's how we do it. That's how we represent Boyle's Law in a graphical setting, you know. Um, as V goes up, P goes down. As P goes down, V goes up. And you actually switch these two, you know. This could be P, this could be V, as long as the rules apply. So here's where we use Boyle's Law to solve problems. So let's say I'm, I'm going scuba diving, right? So I know the volume. <clears throat> it's max volume right there, okay, my, my initial volume. And I know the, the no pressure yet, right? Or very little pressure right now. 
So let's say I'm diving and uh, my oxygen gauge stopped working, right? But I know exactly from my, my little handy-dandy wristwatch exactly what my, my, my pressure is. So we know what the pressure is, right? But we don't know what, exactly what volume this is. We can actually find an equation that can solve for this, okay, based on what we know already. So, okay, so we know this, right? Here's where, where it gets very really interesting. So, you know, we cross multiply, right? Initial volume and pressure will be equal to the final volume and pressure. This is where it gets... So we already know these two, right? We already know our initial values, and we know the pressure already, Let's, for this example of mine, okay? We can actually cross-multiply, divide, to get the final volume. So that is Boyle's Law in a nutshell. It's pretty much always P1V1 equals P2V2. You have three to numbers, you have to look for the one that's missing, right? Now, it can be, get a little more tricky. It can be like P3V3, and there's like a four, maybe like, like, like multiple water tanks attached to each other or something like that, right? So you have to, maybe you know all their volumes and you find all their pressures or something like that. Now you're probably asking yourself, how is Boyle's Law relevant to my life? Well, it actually explains human breathing. When you breathe in, your diaphragm pulls downward, right? And the volume of your lungs expand. And, when it, and the increased volume actually causes decreased pressure outside the lungs, causing air to rush in. So Boyle's Law, pressure and volume, pretty easy, right? I have another law here. This one's actually called Charles Law. This one involves temperature and volume. Jacques Alexandre César Charles, a French scientist during the 18th century, uh, he experimented a lot with balloons. In 1783, he and his team filled a balloon with hydrogen gas, which is not easy to achieve, by the way. Like, if I, if I, if I remember correctly, it took him and his team about 500 pounds of acid and 1,000 pounds of iron just to generate hydrogen gas for this experiment. Anyway... <laughs> August 27th, 1783, he got his, he got this, this big hot air balloon, right? He filled it up with hydrogen gas, and uh, it stayed afloat for like 45 minutes, and it traveled like 15 miles. The thing is, the, 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 the balloon landed in this village and caused like massive panic. Like, the people were, were so terrified of this giant, round UFO-looking thing that they, they tore it up to shreds, you know? <laughs> they just, they, they just attacked it. Um... And by the way, you guys don't need to know this, by the way, but uh, but I just think it's just so funny, you know, it's, it's hilarious what, what lengths these scientists would go through just to get results. Anyway, Charles Law states that in a closed system with constant pressure, so, so pressure is of no concern to us in this law, the temperature and the volume are directly proportional to each other. So if one goes up, the other one goes up, they increase together, they decrease together. Here's a graphical representation of Charles' law. There's two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. They're both increasing together. You may also notice that temperature has uh, negative numbers also, up until absolute zero anyway. Absolute zero is the coldest temperature that is physically possible in this existence. And you may also notice that it's uh, minus 273 degrees Celsius. I believe that's uh, negative 450 degrees-ish Fahrenheit. And of course, volume always remains positive. So just like Boyle's Law, we're going to turn this into an equation. So we're going to divide both sides. My team. So this gets rid of that, right? There you go. So on a test or a homework, we're going to get a problem where it's like, okay, you have a, a, a cup with five milliliters inside of it, and it's uh, 70 degrees in the room. So what, what would happen if it was like 90 degrees in the room? How, how much volume would you get, you know? And so you just cross multiply and divide, just like before. The last of the basic gas laws before we get into the combined gas law is Gay-Lussac's. I know, what an interesting name, right? Um, do I have a story for him? I do. Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac, uh, he helped discover boron. That's right, number five on the periodic table. Uh, he actually helped discover that. And water. Well, he, he, he didn't discover water, but, uh, but uh, he was the guy who figured out that water is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. H2O. That was him. He was the one who figured it out. Um, Joseph Gay-Lussac. Um, in terms of the gas laws, it's very, very similar to that of Charles' law. 
In Gay-Lussac's law, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. So, everything I said uh, and showed you about volume and temperature in Charles' law, just replace volume with pressure, and you have Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, so here's the moment of truth, the combined gas law. If you have to take away one thing away from this lesson, it's this one. Based on what we know so far, we can, you know, take the numbers and plug it into each other. I'm just going to do the algebra for you, okay? The result will be P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Okay, you can check my algebra if you like. Pretty much all of the other gas laws could be derived from this one equation right here. Like, like let's say, for example, that the temperatures are all the same throughout, right? That they're both equal to each other, they're, they're constant. They'll cancel each other out. Take a look at that. Now it's just Boyle's Law. So I have an activity for you guys. It's just a worksheet. Uh, would you like to do these problems on here together, or would you like to work amongst yourselves for 10 minutes, and uh, we'll get back together and check our answers together? Huh? Um, some tips. Keep track of your units. There may be a trick problem on here. Uh, also write down which gas law was being used. So... Doing a, a worksheet should take up some time, and that's pretty much it for my lesson, so thank you for watching.